Can you say, Mr. President-elect, can you say categorically, Mr. President-elect, can you give us a question? You're attacking us. Can you give us a question? Don't be rude. Can you give us a question? I'm not going to give you a question. Can you stay categorically? You are fake news. Sir, can you uh, CNN did get a question. It's the heated exchange, though, everyone's talking about today and what it means in the big picture. Many are slamming the reporter for asking that question. Others saluting him about Russia uh, for asking the question and for the, that network and others publishing this, these rumors about uh, Donald Trump. This is just the latest example of some of the mainstream media blurring the lines of journalism, perhaps, to attack the president-elect. Bree Payton is a staff writer for The Federalist and joins us right now. Bree, when you saw that exchange, you saw something bigger. In what way? Sure. Well, I think it, journalists have an obligation to tell the truth. And I think that, um, you know, we have an old newsroom adage that we always like to repeat as reporters, which is, if your mother says she loves you, you should check it out. Uh, and I think that that very clearly sums up the ethical obligations that reporters have, which is that we have an obligation to publish n the truth and not just what we think is true, but what can be verified as true. And I think when reporters don't do that and when they cross right. the line, they need to be called out and we need to police one another to make sure that we do that. And the fact that somehow the intel source came forward and said that the FBI director did personally brief Donald Trump Friday, does that change anything? Absolutely not. I think it's very clear uh, that Russia's involvement in the election, to whatever extent that truly was, was an attempt to uh, make Americans, you know, unsettled or distrust our electoral system and distrust our government. And I okay. think that reporters, when they are not precise about what happened, I think that they are aiding and abetting Moscow's disinformation campaign and aiding and abetting the Kremlin by Ter extension. Terry Moran of ABC uh, wrote this out. He compared the birther uh, push that Donald. Trump was behind to this. Uh, he said uh, this to, 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 and he actually went directly at it. So let me take a look at that tweet that we could actually see as we roll the prompter a little bit forward. Uh, it says, anonymous, uncorroborated falsehoods are wrong. There's an old saying, live by the sword. Guess it. Uh, you know what it means. So is Donald Trump feeling some of the wrath of, that he brought forward five years ago? No, that's completely ridiculous. The reporters, it's a reporter's job uh, to publish claims that are verified and can be completely 100% corroborated as true. And, you know, I think in the climate that we have today where only 4% of Americans have a favorable view of the media and an overwhelming number of them think that, you know, we are aligned and have a bias when we are reporting, I think we are fighting an uphill right. battle and proving ourselves to be trustworthy. And I think that he is undermining that cause and undermining that fight. Right. And I think that that's very frustrating to watch as a reporter myself. And, you know, there's a couple of things. He made so much news in that press conference about the border wall, about Obamacare, about the Supreme Court justice, about divestiture. It was swamped by the com combative nature of the presser, especially with that reporter in particular. And the other thing was he fights back. And I don't think many people were prepared for that after Clinton, Bush, and Obama. Bree Payton, thanks so much. Thank you.